In this video, we'll talk about independence. Uh, we'll also talk about the chain rule as well as conditional independence. So let's say we have a standard 52 card deck. A 52 card deck consists of four suits, clubs, diamonds, hearts, and spades, and 13 ranks, ace through king. And so you can see a 52 card deck has exactly one of each pair. So let's now shuffle the deck and draw the top three cards. Forget everything we've learned so far about probability. What is the probability that we drew the ace of spades first, then the ten of clubs, and the four of diamonds? And this is written as the probability of A and B and C. So sometimes we use commas instead of the intersection sign. So I would uh, you know, intuitively say 1 over 52 times 1 over 51 times 1 over 50. And why is that? Well, 1 over 52 is the probability of getting the ace of spades first. But then how do we get 1 over 51? Well, it's the probability that we get the ten of clubs given that we drew the ace of spades because there's only 51 cards left in the deck. And 1 over 50 then is the probability of C given A and B. So it's the probability of getting the four of diamonds once we've already drawn those two cards, meaning there's only 50 cards left in the deck. So the chain rule allows us to decompose uh, the probability of n events, a1 and all the way to a n, uh, in, into a, se a sequential order. So the probability of a1 happening, and then a2 given that a1 happened, a3 given that a1 and a2 both happened, and so on, until a n given a1 through a n minus 1. And uh, in the case of two events, well, this is just the definition of conditional probability that we did in the last video. So in general, is the probability of A and B equal to the probability of A times the probability of B? Well, the chain rule says um, this is the probability of A and B. It's A and then B happening after A happened. And so no, unless the special case where probability B given A is the same as the probability of B. And this case is so important, it has a name. Um, events A and B are independent if any of the three equivalent conditions hold. A given B is the probability of A, B given A is the probability of B, and this other one, which you can get by manipulating the definition of conditional probability. And intuitively it says, um, given that B happened, uh, my probability of A is actually the same as if I, if I didn't know anything. So, you know, probability of A unconditionally. So let's try an example. Um, each link here works with probability given independently. What's the probability that A and D can communicate? So the probability of the top half being able, like being able to work is the probability that both A, B works and the link between B, D works. And, that's, and by independence, uh, which we assumed, we can actually multiply this and we can get P times Q. And similarly for the bottom, the probability that the bottom works is R times S by independence, because, um, yeah. And then, now what we actually want is the probability the top works or the bottom works, and that way I can actually communicate um, with, between A and D. And by inclusion exclusion, that's the probability of top plus bottom minus top and bottom. And again, top and bottom are independent, so I'm gonna multiply the probabilities like that as well. And so probability of top is uh, PQ plus RS and then minus PQRS. So this is a way we can use independence. Now we'll define conditional independence. We'll say events A and B are conditionally independent given C if any of the three equivalent conditions hold. And I'm going to just bring this, recall the definition of independence, and notice that every single formula is the same, except we're given C everywhere. So here there's a comma C, here now we're also given C, given C, given C. And also, probability of A and B given C is A given C times B given C. So that's, look at the bottom one, that's the same as the unconditional definition without the given C everywhere. So let's do an example. Suppose there's a coin C1 with probability of head 0.3 and a coin C2 with probability of heads being 0.9. We pick one randomly with equal probability and flip that coin three times independently. What's the probability that we get all heads? We're asking for the probability of three heads. So it actually depends on which coin we picked, right? So we're going to use the law of total probability. It's the probability of getting three heads given that I had coin one times the probability of had coin one plus three heads given coin two times the probability of coin two. And now what we need to do is three he probability of heads, heads, and heads given C1. So the probability of getting you know, heads given that you know which coin you are are actually independent. So what we can do is we can split the probability of these three events into the probability of getting heads one time cubed and so on. And so what we can get is 0.3 times 0.3 times 0.3 uh, times a half because that's the probability of getting coin one and same for probability of coin two except with 0.9. So this is what conditional independence uh, means. Thanks.